In the year 1754, the colonies were still under British control without equal representation in Parliament. And with the majority of settlers beginning to realize that they were not seen as equal when compared to their British counterparts, they fought for change within the colonial and British relations. The Albany Plan of Union, June 1754, was the means of allowing the colonies to unite and recognize their common interests, as well as to show Britain that they were not just a bunch of savages. But with the state's fears of losing power, they denied the plan and went back to attempting to acquire their ultimate goal, equal representation in Parliament. In December of 1754, Benjamin Franklin wrote to William Shirley about the issue of colonial representation in Parliament and the issue of the colonists not being treated as fairly as the British, even though the colonists identify themselves as British citizens. In Benjamin Franklin's opening paragraph, he brought up the topic of how Parliament should allow colonial representation. Franklin wrote a statement that was along the lines of, Parliament is inconsistent with the general interest and national good, and mostly attempts to please private interests of petty corporations or English merchants. Britain was already selfish with the wealth that the colonies had. The colonists were already forced to sell their raw materials much cheaper to Britain under the loosely enforced Navigation Acts. The British also began raising their taxes on the colonies starting in 1685 with the Glorious Revolution and the Domain of New England, which were mainly created to enforce the already neglected tax policies. Franklin played on the colonists' neglect of taxes and laws by stating that the government of the colonies by a parliament in which they are fairly represented would be vastly more agreeable to the people than the method lately attempted to be introduced by royal instruction. This meant that the majority of colonies wouldn't have much objection towards these taxes and laws if they felt that they were represented and that the laws benefited both the colonists and British citizens as a whole, not just the British. Franklin also mentioned that the laws that were now in place would be looked at by a more equal parliament, which would result in less argued and rebelled against by the colonists, and would also result in a following of these taxes and laws. Franklin, like most Americans, did not want separation from Great Britain, but for the colonies in Great Britain to become unified. Benjamin argued that if the British and colonists stopped viewing themselves as people from different communities with completely different views, that they could become but one community with one interest, which he also argued would strengthen the bond between the colonies and Great Britain, while ensuring that future separations would be less of a threat. With Ben stating that the threat of future separations would be of a lesser thought, this idea must have appealed to Governor William Shirley, since the British were getting filthy rich off the colonies, which offset the accumulating debt stemming from the ongoing French and Indian War that would last until 1763. Yet in 1763, the British still did not allow equal representation to the colonies. They began to tax them under a series of unfair taxes passed without the colonial voice having a say in them. With these taxes passed, the colonies began to rebel against these unfair acts. The most famous example of these rebellions would be the boycotting of the British tea into the Boston Harbor, or the Boston Tea Party, in response to the Tea Act of 1773. These British taxes ultimately led up to the Revolutionary War and the colonies gaining their independence from Britain. Therefore, Benjamin Franklin offered Shirley a way to prevent these actions that he knew would some way or another happen in the future. But since Britain still viewed the colonies as a little sibling who couldn't be taken seriously, he ignored Benjamin Franklin's wise advice and request for equal representation in Parliament. Britain had enforced a system of mercantilism, a restraint on the ability to manufacture goods on the colonies in order to keep them from competing economically with Britain. Therefore, Franklin went on to argue how the colonies were part of Great Britain and should be able to enjoy the same privileges as citizens who live within the bounds of Britain arguing that it's not right to deprive inhabitants of common privileges enjoyed by other Englishmen. The examples of common privileges that Franklin listed all had to do with manufactured goods, such as being a shoemaker. This example is significant because it shows how the British people as a whole were extorting the colonies for money under the mercantilist system. The colonists were not allowed to manufacture mainly because if a manufacturer in Britain was making the product and selling it to the colonists, Britain would grow wealthier domestically. Also, if the colonies began creating manufactured goods with their abundance of natural resources, they would economically be stronger and wealthier than Britain. Therefore, the system of mercantilism was implemented because Britain didn't want the colonies exporting manufactured goods, only raw materials. A statement made by Ben Franklin relates strongly to the issue of and unfairness of mercantilism to the colonies. Would this be right? Even if the land were gained at the expense of the state, and would it not seem less right if the charge and labor of gaining additional territory to Britain had been borne by the settlers themselves? 
And would the hardship appear yet greater if the people of the new country should be allowed no representatives in Parliament enacting such impositions? Which, in simplistic terms, means that the colonists settled in America to benefit Britain. Some colonists used their own money to fund the trips, and all colonists had to put in countless time and a lot of effort to create the settlements that would only benefit Britain in terms of wealth and land. And yet these colonists still do not have representation in Parliament, and are still seen as only a source of money that can be exploited without the consent of the colonists. Overall, Benjamin Franklin predicted America's future in this letter to William Shirley. He warned about the dangers that would come along with not viewing the colonies as equal, as well as a mutual relationship as equals between the two countries would lead to only more wealth and power. But Britain still looked down on the colonies and the colonists. And in 1763, the French and Indian War ended, but the new taxes began in order to repay Britain's massive war debt. Franklin's proposition would have taken away the necessity of having to tax the colonists unfairly, which led to an uproar and protest, and ultimately, an economic boycott of British goods. Franklin also stated that the unification between Britain and the colonies would ultimately remove the thought of independence from British, from British and colonists' minds. But since the British ignored this incredibly intelligent statement and suggestion, the colonists ended up starting and winning the Revolutionary War in 1775, thus gaining independence from Britain. Therefore, Benjamin Franklin provided the solutions to all of the problems that would have been caused in the near future by the inequality, but they were just ignored because Britain viewed the colonists as much lesser.